We're all familiar with the phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side. A change of scenery can invite a breath of fresh air, and if there's one IP that is in dire need of a refresh, it's Scream. You wouldn't believe it, but when the first teaser dropped, I had made my mind up because I had sized that scene up. Despite the mere 43 seconds of the film's runtime, my impression could be summed up in a single word. Now, we're obviously here to talk about the official trailer, not the initial teaser, but the former seemingly did the unthinkable because it merely expanded on the latter. Let me explain. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I knew it, I love when he does that. This film's handlers went to the well one too many times, got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, and left us a trail of breadcrumbs to track their carelessness. By the way, that word of the day is familiarity. Teacher is present, so class is in session. That monotony doesn't just apply to this particular film, but permeates this latest iteration of the franchise and is reflective of the creative regime behind it. Let's throw out a softball pitch, just a little quibble to make you think that I'm nitpicking. Did they go for the Roman numeral in this title because they've already reused the single word scream naming for last year's sequel? And they just copy the Resident Evil gimmick of applying the sequel number into the title text? I guess copying Halloween 2018's model will only take you, uh, but so far. Ah, incarnate, you pinnacle cynical critical, I hear you protest. You're just griping about low-hanging fruit. Well, future subscriber, all I can say is buckle up. Which brings me to the trailer breakdown. I gotta ask, does anything look more out of place than Ghostface perusing a corner store deli? Slashing prices like he's slashing throats. Wholesale slaughter on red meat, but only for the next 10 minutes. Something about your movie slasher holding a sawed-off while masked and fully draped just looks off. I had this secret. There's a darkness inside of me. It followed me here. I see we're still dealing with the forgettable leading lady's daddy issues from the last movie that didn't affect anything, no one remembers, and won't actually impact this plot. Good stuff. And then we get what this trailer thinks is a twist. Nothing says moving the plot forward like a glorified trophy case of all previous killers, half of whom I bet you don't even remember because I sure as hell don't. And then the trailer immediately shines a spotlight on how formulaic it's grown by spelling it out. Hello. Let's play a game. You know you're like the tenth guy to try this, right? It's no secret that this franchise hinges on fourth wall breaking commentary, but by pointing out how unoriginal your killer is, you're really just highlighting how repetitive your writing staff is. I've seen this movie before. He really needs some new material. He might actually be the most derivative one of all. I mean, Christ, the same house. But you forgot the first rule of surviving a stab movie. Never answer the- I'm bored. Wait! That's why I'm gonna shoot you in the head. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom- Maybe you just can't get past the surface of things. Speaking of repetitive, nice of the movie to steal the crawling ladder scene straight out of Judgment Night. Frank. If I haven't made it obvious what's going on here, the trusty media sycophant Bloody Disgusting served up a timely fluff piece to pick out the trailer's easter eggs. I'd much prefer to count all the rip-offs we can spot in an under three minute trailer. Just don't make a drinking game out of this. After all, a six pack only holds a half dozen beers. 
Before we get to the train wreck, let's hit the sponsors. Think of the power to tune out the whole world placed in your hands. Now think again, because Jabra Headsets puts that power in your ears. Listen closely. From workout earbuds to Bluetooth music headsets and office hearing devices. So, if other brands play your music sounding like a broken record, march to the beat of a different tune with Jabra. If you're an HD snob like me, you probably buy Samsung for all your major electronics. Catch up on your favorite horror classics on one of their Ultra HD TVs. Watch one of Screen Factory's Blu-rays on their 4K players. Keep up with updates from 80s horror documentary In Search of Darkness on a high-end tablet. Subscribe to your favorite YouTuber through one of their Galaxy phones. I have so many Samsung devices I've always thought. They should be paying me. Well, now they can, and you can help. If you use the link in the description for either Samsung or Jobber purchases, it'll help the channel out tremendously. With the promotional considerations accounted for, it's on with the show. And now we end the trailer where the teaser began. While it would be easy to compare this trailer's finale to the closing scene of another teen horror film, Final Destination 3, where all survivors huddled together in one subway car make easy pickings for that movie's threat, we here at the Mind's Eye prefer a challenge when evaluating such mundanity. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. This is the Mind's Eye train, serving the Stagnation Nation, Villain Complex, and Long Island, with stops at the Vampire State Building and Madison Scare Garden. If you spot suspicious activity, please notify your local horror content creator. Will the real Ghostface please stand up? Correct me if I'm wrong, and let's face it, I never am. Didn't they already pull the same gag in the first Scream sequel? Four movies ago? 26 years ago? The real killer lurking amongst other masked figures, inching his way towards his target? Oopsie doopsie, I mopped it up again. I've seen this movie before. He really needs some new material. He might actually be the most derivative one of all. This trailer actually made the teaser trailer worse. It's your basic setup of several party animals dressed for Halloween, packed like sardines in a Manhattan train, or your basic morning commute in the Big Apple, sans the copious pooling of hobo urine. The survivors of our last movie, see also vapid meat sack leftovers, react one after another, not to the congestion of cosplayers in this subway, but by the presence of multiple ghost face masks. The lights go out, and the bad guy makes his move, and moves in for the kill to gut him that annoying stoner from the last slasher film. God damn it! Seriously, don't do that! Oh, it's all good. Oh, what the hell is with that fat white Jamaican Oh, kid? I want to kill that mother man. This bad casting, Bobby. No, not that one. The one dressed in the Morgan Freeman uniform in a subway car. On the subway today, a man came up to me to start a conversation. He made small talk, this lonely man talking about the weather and other things. I tried to be pleasant and accommodating, but my head began to hurt from his banality. But, let's face it, that's not the first time a woman in a uniform has had a train run on her. <laughs> Ironic that... This preview ends on a train considering how much this trailer's got riding against it. Because brother, I'm gonna tell you, the rest of the mannequins from the last film are utterly forgettable. It'll be interesting to hear the excuses that the lame stream comes up with when they realize that their media darling, Jenna Ortega, is neither the celebrity nor the star that... People riding the Netflix Wednesday wave swears that she is. Honestly, who even remembers that she was in the last movie? If this sequel doesn't deliver at the box office, bring on the copium. As the machine shifts the blame away from Ortega to protect their flavor of the month. But even if it turns a profit, you really gonna hand Jenna Ortega a W that she didn't earn? 
Who are you, Greta Thunberg? How dare you! Print. Cut. That's a trailer. I don't know what's worse. The sheer number of ripoffs that are present and prevalent in this preview, or the fact that this derivative philosophy is seemingly carried over from the last cash grab these filmmakers attempted, namely, last year's Scream movie. They haven't learned anything from Scream 2022's a lacking originality, so now they're back for round two, or six, depending on how you look at it. With the removal of series stapled Nev Campbell and the death of David Arquette's character, this series is so action-packed with people you couldn't give a toss about, they had to bring memorable franchise players back from the dead after the last movie brought deceased killers back from the dead. This movie wanted to serve as a cinematic instruction manual for the modern requel. A what? Or, uh, like a sequel, fans are torn on the terminology. God, please speak English. Okay. Seven years after The Force Awakens introduced it. And defended Ryan Johnson, of all people. Remember the stab movie that came out last year? Oh, yeah, the one the Knives Out guy directed, right? You know, I actually really liked that one. Of course you did, you have terrible taste. The hardcore stab fans hated it. Stab ate pissed on their childhoods. How they crammed in social commentary just to make it elevated. How the main character is a Mary Sue. What's a Mary Sue? You really don't want to know. Does anyone even remember what the legacy that director left on that franchise? See, you can't just reboot a franchise from scratch anymore. The fans won't stand for it. But you can't just do a straight sequel either. Uh, you gotta build something new, but not too new, or the internet goes bug <coughs> nuts. Not quite a reboot, not quite a sequel. Like the new Halloween, Saw, Terminator, Jurassic Park, Ghostbusters, even Star Wars. It always, always goes back to the original. Well... You live by the sword, you die with a scream. From the dung heap you came, so to the dung heap you shall return. Brace for impact, horror fans, because Ghostface Takes Manhattan is gearing up for the last Jedi installment of the Scream franchise. Mark my words. It makes perfect requel sense. I fully understand a new direction for any franchise. But as far as switching venues from small town America... Two, the city that never sleeps, I think they're in for a bumpy ride. The series has already tried the City of Angels, and as much as the writing team's worldview has Los Angeles written all over it, the last time the franchise headed to Hollywood, well, let's just say six movies in, there's a reason why no one talks about that West Coast trip. Shifting gears to Manhattan will do nothing to reinvigorate this ailing franchise. This is what happens when unoriginality is financially rewarded. There is zero incentive to innovate, experiment, improve, or improvise. This is what happened with the Venom films. This was the fate that befell the recent Halloween trilogy. This is especially what happens when you overly rely on nostalgia... You do nothing to establish the building blocks for your continuing series, yet money grubbing compels you to keep the gravy train going when you failed to lay down railroad tracks. For its final insult, did they really steal the tagline of Alien? All of these ripoffs paint an uglier picture than this chick's eyesore of a haircut. Seriously, droopy dog, why would you style that mop on your head in the image of a shrub just to draw attention towards your sagging face? You know what? I'm happy. The new regime that's gatekeeping this series could have simply cobbled together a preview of fakeouts, shallow character development, Jump scares, teased a few kills, and called it a day. Your standard slice and dice marketing. Instead, these people are genuinely banking on its waning fan base, collectively suppressing the feeling of deja vu while actively marketing tropes that we've seen before. I don't know if that's brazen or just stupid, but it definitely is lazy. And mind you, If they're using this much material stolen from other films to promote this sequel, 
than just how badly plagiarizes the actual movie. They might as well call this flick Scream Grab. With all the red flags I've mentioned, not to mention the repetitiveness of 2022's sequel, not to mention fast-tracking this movie just one year later, I hope I've presented the case that a change of place ain't a change of pace for this series because they're simply doing more of the same. But, bear two things in mind. First off, to the would-be apologists, defenders, and detractors, the new handlers of this franchise are the same people that hate your stinking guts. And, number two, remember, New York, new rules. Now, where have I heard that before? I've seen this movie before. You really need some new material. You might actually be the most derivative one of all. Never answer the- I'm bored. Wait! I've been incarnate reminding you. I ain't just a big deal, I'm the real deal. If you see these dogs in your front yard, huh, just know upstairs I'm going hard. Bing bong. If you're resigned to your fate, time to subscribe to your fears. Warn your friends. Warn everyone.